Here we go, Brian. Methyl chloroisothiazolamine, TMIT, and methyl isothiazolamine, MIT. What do these two have in common besides being really hard to pronounce? Well, both of these are ingredients in my shampoo. <laughs> both of them are chemical preservatives that protect against microorganisms and help extend the shelf life of my shampoo. But are they safe? The article Mixture Toxicity of Methyl Lysothiazolamine and Propylene Glycol 2018 says CMIT it has been found to cause allergic contact dermatitis and is thus no longer permitted for use as preservative in leave-on cosmetics. Leave-on cosmetics are things such as lotions, lipsticks, and lip balms. For MIT, European regulations permit a concentration of 0.01% in leave-on cosmetics. Both of these chemicals can cause allergic contact dermatitis, a skin rash that can last up to four weeks. The article Cosmetics Preservation Review on Present Strategies of 2018 states, hazardous cosmetics pose a risk to consumers due to the presence of prohibited or restricted substances under the present enforced cosmetic laws. In addition, the contamination of cosmetic products is another risk for consumers' health. This is why I believe that we should increase and improve the regulations on personal care products. One area that I think requires greater regulation is, on, is in organic products. Products labeled as organic gain a lot of attention because people believe that the natural ingredients are safer and better than the chemicals that are manufactured in labs. The standards for a product being labeled as organic is really low. There is no definition from the Federal Drug Administration. In fact, on the United States Department of Agriculture's website, they say the FDA does not define or regulate the term organic as it applies to cosmetics, body care, or personal care products. USDA regulates the term organic as it applies to agricultural products through its National Organic Program. Organic does not mean better or safer. Directly from FDA.gov, many plants, whether or not they are, are organically grown, contain substances that may be toxic or allergenic. It's not safer just because it's organic. And it's not better either. The organic label results in consumers paying more for value added products that aren't much different from the original conventional formulations, says the article Coming Clean 2010. So organic products, they can cost more, and they aren't better than the regular products. But the, re the reason that manufacturers are hiding these ingredients in their, um, in their list of ingredients is because it's cheaper to have many, it's, the reason that they use organic in their labels is because it's it's more profit for them, and it could be cheaper than alternatives that are actually safer for the consumer. It's a lot easier for it's it's a lot easier to use the manufactured chemicals in the lab, and many of the ingredients on the list you wouldn't really know what they mean. Manufacturers are able to put fragrance as an ingredient. But fragrance could mean anything. It could be any sort of scented chemical, and it's not always safe for the consumer. Wouldn't you all agree that this is wrong and needs to be fixed? Another, another misleading label is that needs greater regulations is the dermatologist recommended label. Many of you might have seen something similar, like four out of five doctors agree, or nine out of 10 dentists use this toothpaste. It impacts all of us as consumers. Just like with organic products, products with a dermatologist recommended label were statistically more expensive without evidence of superior safety in regards to allergenic potential. According to the article, the dermatologist recommended label isn't meaningful. Just like with participation trophies, a lot of if all these products have the recommended label, then it then they, it loses its value. One study found that the label 
was on this product, and the product only had one dermatologist recommended. Dermatologists are afraid of more regulations, though. More regulations could cause good products to go unnoticed because those manufacturers don't apply to get the label, or they don't even have the resources to apply for the label. But with these regulations, the label would have more meaning because the companies that actually get the label, the label actually have meaning when the companies get the label. So with all these issues, the government should improve upon their safety standards. The organization from safecosmetics.org in 2018 says the federal food, federal food, drug, and cosmetic, cosmetic act includes 112 pages of standards for food and drugs, but just two pages for cosmetic safety. This is why we should support the Safe Cosmetics and Personal Care Products Act of 2018. This was introduced by Illinois Representative Jan Schakowsky on September 26th of this year. And what this act will do is it will increase the FDA's authority to regulate products and increase the safety of or the safety for consumers. So what can all, we all do besides supporting this act? Well, when we're buying products, we should Make sure that when it says natural or organic, that it actually is natural and organic, and that it's not just some name that they put on the packaging. We should also avoid products that have these ingredients of chemical names that we don't know, or just avoid fragrance in general. And if it says dermatologist recommended, you should just avoid it unless you actually know it is, derm unless your dermatologist recommends it. So remember, before buying any personal care products, do your research. <laughs>